Welcome to the Four Visions Market Podcast, a space built on the principles of integrity and reciprocity. Together, we will engage in thought-provoking conversations about plant medicines, why these plants are coming out of the rainforest, jungles, and mountains after thousands of years, and what it means to be in right relationship with the ancestral wisdom cultures and guardians of these traditions. I'm your host, Mariah Ganessa, founder and director of Four Visions Market. This podcast is the natural evolution in our commitment to providing you, our tribe, with incredible resources to support you on your healing journey through plant medicines. Welcome home. Our guest today is Mariana Mai, an artist, visionary, singer-songwriter, and ceremonialist native to Coyacan, Tenochtitlan, Mexico. Her life and service is rooted in traditional folk medicine through the creative, ancestral, feminine healing arts to reignite the life force of one's voice, prayer, and purpose in the world. Devoted to her path of curanderismo, she is a practitioner of the Mexica Pies Descalzos tradition of Mexico and a student of the Amazonian Shipibo tradition through the Lopez Sanchez lineage of Peru. In facilitating accessible ceremonial containers with reverence to the diverse ways of self-remembrance, healing, integration, and leadership, she bridges the wisdom teachings of science and spirit together as one in contribution to restoring health and harmony between human and land. In this episode, we discuss Mariana's journey to her origin as a vehicle to healing her ancestry and integrating all parts of herself to discover her life's purpose as well as how to work with other cultures and traditions in a good way to support our healing journey and spiritual paths. You'll receive practical wisdom on how to be in deeper connection with Mother Earth and all of creation, as well as what it means to be in allyship and service to the ancestral traditions we all love and cherish. This conversation is so potent and Mariana transmits her loving clarity with such grace it was truly an honor and joy to have this conversation and to be able to share it with you all. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome, Mariana. Thank you so much for being here and sharing your space and your heart with us. I'm feeling so blessed for this opportunity to connect with you. And it's so wonderful when you know you have a sisterly connection or a a fraternal connection with someone and your paths have crossed and and there's been synchronicity over the t- over the years but this is the first time we're actually getting to connect and speak and so I'm really looking forward to this conversation I just want to thank you and welcome you on to the show thank you Mariah it's such a joy and an honor to be here with you and yeah to have taken all the roads to lead us here so I would love to begin our conversation today asking for you to share a little bit about how your return to your origin and roots played a fundamental role in your path and your healing journey, as well as how that return set the foundation and opened the way for your learning from other ancestral cultures. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the journey, I feel like, always begins when, you know, we're children and the understanding uh, begins to make sense over time. So my path began when I was born in Mexico, Tenochtitlan, and uh, grew up in those lands in that valley and over time migrated to the north to to the United States, so-called. Uh, Turtle Island. So I then began to experience the different cultures and the different places and people that impacted me in the way I related to life and the way I related to myself. And that time in my life really marked a a big turning point because I, I lost that physical connection to my origin. I lost that direct line with my family that still lived in Mexico and also the traditions, the food, the smells, you know, all of the the life force that brought me into this earth. And so 
uh, my journey has really been this return to to place, to people, to purpose, and to prayer uh, within my own ancestry through many different discoveries of, uh, I would say, first, my ancestral healing. So getting to know, you know, all the parts of my life and self that are 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 here to to heal and and get to know um you know the root of of my purpose through through them and exploring different uh ways of communicating with the parts of myself that were forgotten especially through my mother line so the d- different traditions you know that my mother left in Mexico due to the migration due to the move and and then seeing how the healing my ancestral healing has guided me you know throughout all of these years and that uh impacting me so much that it brought me to this uh greater awareness of all other peoples and all, all other places in the world that I felt resonant to to then create that web of of common unity of community and understanding to uh, get to know a little bit more about how other peoples and other places, you know, the different plants that the peoples have tended to over years that help them to return to their origin. So, you know, in a way of weaving my own healing path led me to also being in communion and in direct relationship with others as well. It's so beautiful. And I love, I love starting at this point. It feels very ripe and right to begin this conversation because so many of us have to recover or remember before we can move forward into the chapter awaiting us or the life awaiting us. And, and so I think it's an important part to start the conversation and to begin the healing journey with and very very resonant on many levels and so you know you talked a little bit about this concept of relationship just in this introduction and and as I was preparing for the interview I got a chance to hear you speak in some other contexts and a lot of what you share is based on this this concept of relationship how we are always and constantly in relationship with all life and I would love for you to go into that a little bit with us today and give us some context of of what that means to you as well as how we can utilize this understanding to weave a life of greater communion and greater presence. Yeah, so, you know, as most of us are remembering that we are in this animate way of being to life, right? That everything is alive. Everything has a consciousness. Everything has a heartbeat and a purpose to being here uh, on the earth plane as well as in the spirit world and how that connection between sky and earth, horizontal and vertical, unites us to being a bridge. And being a bridge means being in relation. So as human kin are in relationship with each other, we have the blessing and the the greatest opportunity is really to also have communication, have these direct lines of of understanding and listening with the more than human kin. So the world that we live in, the natural world, the spiritual world, the physical plane, the material plane, you know, all of these connect the the threads of how we are listeners and how we are students uh, of this life. And I truly believe that, you know, each one of us has a unique way of expressing ourselves. And so within that, we have a unique way of listening, right? Whether it's through feelings, so sensations, or whether it's through visions and uh, seeing things and remembering them a little bit easier than than other ways. Um, the the relationships that we care for in this life are are the mirrors that help us to remember not only who we are, but that there is no separation between all of the worlds and all of the <clears throat> all of the species that you know we get to 
to learn from and listen to and also give back to in this life. So as it is a blessing and an opportunity, I also feel like it's a responsibility that we're given in this life to take care of not only the relationships that we have with others, but also the relationship within ourselves to then, you know, offer a clear mirror, um, you know, a little bit a, bit, a little bit cleaner than, you know, the years past um, mm -hmm. as we grow and mature and become, you know, greater allies in this life. Mm -hmm. It's It's so true because we are so conditioned in our society as well as just the nature of the human mind that could take and we're always in this relationship from this place of of what we're receiving you know and you spoke about being a bridge you spoke about this this level of reciprocity with all of our interactions and it's it's so potent the the truth within that and the reality that we are able to open ourselves up so much wider to the force of creation when we recognize that it's two-way street with everything, whether it be with the water that we're drinking and our connection to the elements, or whether it be in relationship with someone else or the relationship with spirit, that there is this constant communion and dialogue and flow between these energies. And so... I would love to ask you uh, to expand a little bit on how we can be in relationship with the earth and how we can connect more fully with nature because so many of us find ourselves really disconnected. And I know in my own experience, in my, in my studies and my work, nature has been the constant that has brought me home and continue to hold me and carry me through. And my relationship with her has, has been the foundational pillar from which I'm able to grow and mature and learn. And so I believe that communion and connection with nature is fundamental for all of humanity to truly remember why we're here and to reclaim uh, a new sense of living. And I think you do too. And so I would love to hear your words about what you perceive as ways in which we can deepen that connection. Yeah, I love the way you express that. And, you know, it's it's simpler than we think often. And I also feel like, you know, again, this blessing, this opportunity, this responsibility is that it's accessible, right? We live in a world where we can reach a place on the land that can help us to breathe a little bit easier. And that's by simply standing in front of a plant, you know, and witnessing the plant be in its, in its rootedness and take up space and grow together, right, with, with other plants. And simply by, you know, standing next to a tree and watching over its grandiose canopy and feeling how small we truly are and remembering that, you know, as we breathe, they breathe and we give each other this exchange of life. And, you know, I think those accessible points that we can return to, those reminders of stepping outside on the land and simply by breathing and, you know, closing your eyes and and having this this moment of connection is so important. And so I always return to accessibility first. I think oftentimes we can complicate things and especially, you know, with ritual, right? It's, it's, it's so, so simple, the profundity of the connection that we can create with a ritual of, you know, going out to greet a plant that you've witnessed over the seasons change, right? Mm -hmm. And I do feel like the reciprocity is also a fundamental pillar in being in relationship to the earth because it's a contribution that we're giving back to to the land that listens to us that remembers us you know just as it remembers the water every time the seed is is hydrated perhaps after a drought or um, as the rain falls and a the same way we can walk outside and look up at the sky as the sun is setting and 
witness the migration of the birds, you know, flying west and and seeing how these patterns and these these cycles are are inside of us as well. You know, the intelligence that lives in the natural world and in the earth, she she truly takes care of us and never abandons us, right? It's the the love of the divine mother that welcomes us time and time again, even if and especially if we forget, right, to to walk outside and take that breath, take that moment of reconnection and remembering that it truly is that easy. It's so simple. And we receive so much from it. So how do we give back? Well, we take that walk outside and, you know, we we reconnect. Thank you for simplifying it for us. <laughs> it's not so hard. We make it so much more difficult than it really needs to be. And uh, so many seeds of wisdom there. Such a beautiful sharing. So thank you. And, you know, your your Instagram tag is easy to breathe. And I love that because you are just, you're easy to breathe with. You're easy to be with. And there's this level of authenticity and presence that is really present <laughs> and felt. Um, and so how can we cultivate more of that? How can we live from a greater place of gratitude and connection in each moment and in each breath? Yeah, so I, I feel, you know, as we talk about the earth, you know, the the direct relation that we have with our earth is is with our own bodies, right? So our physical body. And I think that the concept of taking care of our our bodies is the most important of them all in this life, right? It's this home that we inhabit, this sacred vessel, you know, that we get to get to walk with. And so I think that for me, you know, along my my path of of reconnecting to to the earth, to my prayer, to health, to harmony, to being in harmony truly with this life is to take care of my physical body. Um, you know, within many traditions, there is a way of relating to the body as the house, right? My teachers in in the Amazon of Peru, they they call the body the home and so it's how to clean the home, how to sweep the home every single day, you know, all of these ways that not only are we in relationship with the elements through our body as we cleanse ourselves with the water and we breathe, you know, with our with the air of our body and we place our hands over our heart to feel the fire of of our of our inner vision of that purpose of life simply by placing our hands over and then simply by, you know, coming back to touch. So awakening the sensations is is a wonderful way, you know, to reconnect to the body and that within this connection to our physical body lives all of our other bodies, right? So the emotional, the mental, the soma, and also the spiritual and so firstly, to take care of our physical body and have an awareness of what it needs in order to be well, that's the understanding of our body literacy. And then we can access a deeper point of, of truth and authenticity and, and respect, right, for our, our own selves and, and for this gift that we're given to, to live in this life. To, to deepen the relationship to our own bodies. So however it is for you, you know, to relate to your body, to take care of your body. There's so many tools, so many ways, so many techniques, so many practices, right? To, to move the energy and um, come back home to your body. Mm. And I love how harmony was brought into that offering because so many of us are living in disharmony with ourselves and we're not even aware of it, right? It's tension in the body or it's what we're, the, the media or the input that we're giving to our senses or it's the foods that we're eating where we're not honoring or we're, we're choosing subconsciously to sabotage. So we're, we're making 
these subconscious or unconscious decisions that actually create disharmony, not only just in our physical body, but in our external reality. And many of us don't realize how much disharmony we are creating. But I think that bringing that prayer into part of our daily life is a big part of accessing greater joy and greater connection, greater fulfillment and nourishment. And and so working towards that place of true balance, true equilibrium is so, so important on this path for sustainable joy and sustainable peace. And I love these very simple and helpful tips of how to access them that you just shared. So, so beautiful and so resonant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I love this word harmony too. I always love to, to, to feel into why, at least in the English language, the one we're speaking in right now in a verbal way is that, you know, I always say that we, we are here to create uh, harmony, not harm, and it's this uh, unity of of again this respect, right, to our our life, our body, our purpose, our health. You know what, like you mentioned, what we expose ourselves to, and and also how much uh, we allow those to influence us, right? So there's so many layers here that. Um, help us to be in harmony. And I feel like the only way to, to maybe not the only way, but a way to learn how to be in harmony is to pave the path that is not harmonious. So you learned what is harmonious for you. And it looks differently for everyone, you know. And so I want to, you know, bring to the, to the, to the forefront here that it, it can be messy, you know, mm-hmm. it's, and, and it, that's the purpose of, cleaning and seeing the beauty in the imperfection and just honoring our humanness you know Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so beautiful because that's it's so true we have to see what's not working to be able to then go out and create what feels right and what feels like that vibration of existence that we do want to cultivate and that process is very messy and uncomfortable you know it's very much more comfortable to stay in what's not working and justify or make excuses or say that it is working when it's really not, you know? So all of that is part of the process of transformation. It's the process of growth and spiritual maturation. And it's, it all kind of fits together really beautifully. So I would love to talk a little bit about culture with you. And, you know, we started off the conversation, you sharing a little bit about your origin and and your story and your work with healing your lineage. And, And I would love to move the conversation and ask you to to speak a little bit about this concept of culture, because you are speaking to an audience who is very much interested and working with the ancestral wisdom cultures of the Amazon. Mm. And so many of our listeners are connected and feel a deep, strong call and connection to these ancestral cultures. And for most of us, they are not our bloodline, but there is a strong, strong connection there. So my, my first question is, why do we feel so connected to ancestral cultures that are not our own? And maybe you could share a little bit about what, why that is and, um, and your insight onto that. And then how is culture created? What is culture? So that we can start to orient ourselves a little bit more to this concept of what is not our own and, and what is culture to begin with. Yeah, I love these questions so much. They hmm. <laughs> bring a lot of a lot of joy to my heart because, you know, we are all people of a culture and uh, I think that for me culture means representation and translation of place of people and of prayer. And I, along my path of, 
not only getting to know my own culture, but being at the feet of so many different altars and homes and temples and sacred sites of of culture is that it's all stems and roots from the earth, right? It's this creation of earth language, of earth speak that is translated in so many different ways, nonverbal, verbal, and that are then translated through the material realm. And this is how craft is created. You know, craft is a most ancient tradition that helped and helps people to understand the the story, the origin, the creation stories of humankind. And so these are physical representations uh, that are made from the elements, that are made from, you know, earth, and that help to unite people in place and prayer. And when I think about, you know, all of the different cultures that I've learned from, uh, they all return to the same root of, of being, you know, humans upon the earth and finding ways to live in, in that right relationship with this life. And so I do believe that, you know, for us that have strong connections and those, those pulls to other cultures, uh, for for so many reasons why we feel connected to other cultures is that we feel that understanding that other cultures also have, that maybe this culture sings that song in the frequency or in the melody that just helps you to remember something greater beyond yourself, that feels that makes you feel that connection. To, to source, to, to the divine, to the sacred. And it's, it's such a precious moment to embrace because, of course, being at the feet of, you know, any other culture's altar, whether it's through a ceremony or just, you know, listening to the, to the way that they speak their native tongue, even if you don't understand it, is one of the greatest gifts I've received in this life. And it's, you know, getting to to understand, you know, through their eyes, through the way they walk with their relations and their village, what it means to be in right relationship to life. Mm -hmm. So as we go placing ourselves at the feet of the altars of other cultures, as we go humbly seeking out these tools that will help us in our own personal evolution, as well as help to activate our own greatest potential in our service, right? Because that's the next chronological step as we go on our healing path is to then find a way to be in service and to give back. How can we do this in a good way? How can we open ourselves and orient ourselves to these ancestral wisdom cultures and to utilize them and utilize these traditions in right relationship? Yeah really important questions to inquire. I would say firstly, you know, arriving to this place with another culture, this opportunity to to be in in relationship with them as a student. So uh, cultivating a sense of studentship within yourself. So humbly, you know, stepping a foot their door and, you know, as if you are walking into someone's home with respect and you know whether it's you take off your shoes or you know you look someone in the eye and you present yourself you know how do you not only want to be recognized and and remembered because they remember um, but also how are you uh, giving back and giving to to the way that you are paving on their land the way that you are you know paying respect to the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years of protection and preservation that, you know, back in the day was, we were not as, as Westerners, as people outside of the culture, we were not allowed in, or there wasn't that opening or that trust, right, to uh, welcome another in. So 
that studentship, that humble listening of uh, number one, really asking ourselves, why are we here? Mm -hmm. What the intention is of, of being in relationship. And I always return to the listening, just continuing to cultivate that acute listening, that sense of awareness of how then that intention grows to see how to be in, in right relationship with them and asking questions, learning, and finding your place that feels right for, for the, whole, the whole body, that feels like we all bring so much medicine to each other. And it's important to, to know, you know, what, when it is that we speak and when it is that we listen and mm -hmm. simply having that open ear of, of listening and yeah, knowing, knowing what the needs are, I feel, and having the, the, that respect of uh, how to step uh, lightly. And it can be that it's a long-term relationship, right? If you, if you feel connected to a culture and you're there to, you know, cultivate a, a long-term relationship or want to have a sincere relationship, right? That sincere connection. There is no rush, mm -hmm. right? And and it's just to embrace each and every single moment as the first moment that you have with them. And yeah, remember to to just listen. Mm -hmm. So many seeds of wisdom in that response, and just really want to give gratitude, you know, because. Part of the intention behind this podcast is to provide resources and conversations that support and, and stimulate our community and help to accompany the sourcing of the plants and the tools that we provide through our marketplace. And so along with the ethical sourcing also comes the need for these conversations, right? Because it's one thing to purchase from a company that's that's doing good work, right? And to know that you're sourcing ethically. But it's a whole nother thing to be working with these tools. And as soon as we start working with these plants and these allies, we immediately have a responsibility to start to bring awareness and attention to these themes. So I really appreciate you talking about them with me and, and creating this conversation. And, um, you know, you talked a lot about this element of being a bridge because that's kind of how your journey has unfolded of being a bridge for your culture to, as you move to the West and to the United States, as well as now your work with the Shipibo families, as well as some of the other Indigenous communities that you are in partnership with. And this part of being a bridge is is really beautiful because it it affirms and uh, accompanies uh, this concept of reciprocity, right? Just like what you were talking about of go when we go to learn from from a different culture, from a different um, community, that we are open to listening to their, what their needs are instead of just assuming that we know. And so when we go to listen and we hear what those needs are, how can we create the space and how can we utilize our tools that we have to amplify and bring that into a reality, right? And so I would love to hear a little bit about your experience doing that because I know that you have your uh, organization, Origen Raiz, which is all about um, amplifying the voices specifically of the peoples of Peru and Guatemala and Mexico and working to create a platform where these messages, these important wisdoms can be shared. And so I, I know just simply from the work that you're doing, that you believe in this need and to uh, get these messages out, you know. And I think that this is important too to mention because anyone who is involved in being a bridge, anyone who's involved in in this type of work, sees that humanity is at a pivotal point where these wisdom teachings, these ancestral traditions, are crucial for us to survive uh, and for us to thrive. And so. I would love to hear a little bit more about 
your process with putting yourself in service and how how it unfolded, as well as to hear a little bit more about your vision with this project and and what work is being done in this capacity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So as you mentioned, you know, you become a representative and, you know, within our relationship to cultures, we we become, you know, the messengers, right? We learn from either our own or others and we carry these teachings. They become, in a way, a braid and a weaving of the way that we we live, you know, whether it's spoken in the same way or not, right? It's just embedded in our spirit. It's that direct transmission, you know, that you receive when you're with these uh, cultures that that offer their their life, their force, their power, and you know all that that brings to the heart. And so, as a representative, then when we are in relationship with a plant and a medicine, you know, the sourcing, as you mentioned, is extremely important to know the story of how it was, you know, planted from seed to harvested with hand and knowing how, you know, your purchase is impacting a family or two or a village, you know, it's like the the way that we put our resources into action with our money in the modern world, it multiplies in impact in these indigenous communities. And so, you know, for me, as a representative now, not only of my culture, but as being a bridge and serving and supporting uh, this mission to amplify, to, you know, give, give voice a louder, like giving a microphone to you know, these people is that I do believe that we are in a time where the ancient is uniting with the modern and that there is a purpose for all of the resources that we have as modern peoples to help, you know, uh, the indigenous communities. And of course, number one, if they're willing, number Mm -hmm. two, if that's a need for them. And then having, you know, the, um, the trust as a family right? Not just entering someone's home and and wanting that to become a business and, you know, anything like that. Creating trust is so important. And we know this because without trust, you know, there's, there's no integrity. Mm-hmm. And so I think that trust takes time to build. And that's what I was mentioning before, you know, there is no rush At the time of my journey, when I began to uh, take a break from my pottery business and I had this vision of traveling back to Mexico and going on a pilgrimage through different villages and communities to learn a little bit more about their techniques and their, their ways with the clay, I went just as a listener, I went to just be in awe of the beauty that it is, you know, to sculpt a a plant, a tiny little plant that a woman, a figurine is holding in her basket. And that, that represents the harvest of the summer, you know, and all of the different seeds and crops that are represented through the clay, you know, um, just being in awe of the beauty of that. And, and then feeding my purpose to be also an alfarrera, someone who works with clay. And then over the years, I I felt called to go back to these communities and capture these moments. And of course, with permission and having trust already with the families and Mm -hmm. growing together in unison, I then decided to create a documentary series with these families to give back, you know, these moments to the families so that they have copies to show the future generations, you know, of of girls, right, in their community, how their abuelas, how their grandmothers worked with clay, because, you know, we are at risk in this moment in time where maybe those traditions will be lost. Maybe those traditions, you know, won't be passed on. So that was my contribution at the beginning uh, in this way. And 
you know, over the years, uh, it brought me to the Amazon rainforest and it brought me to the Shipibo community of Peru. And I started working with a family there that are an unbroken matriarchal lineage of women alfarreras, potters that, you know, are a long line of incredible women uh, that are not that many now. So I have been listening to how to be in support and in relationship, really. At the moment, we are working on filming different videos and different online contents for them to help tell their story, to translate their cosmovision. You know, I think most of us are familiar with the Shipibo textiles and the the different, um, how they call it, kene, the Ikaro language that, you know, we admire and we see all over the place, all over the world now. And very few of us know what they mean. And, you know, there is such deep wisdom literally woven in those threads Mm -hmm. that, you know, are made with so much prayer and, you know, that the preservation of these, these ways from the women, from the children, from the villages, from the community, you know, the long lineage that has passed on these, these traditions, they are at risk, you know? And so I, over the time, was listening to how this vision wanted to be evolved and now have have received clarity of creating an online platform as a living library to share the teachings of the Shipibo community of the Ukayali Basin and having them tell their story, having these teachings available through video and creating that opening for them to, to share. And that's every time I ask them, you know, what, what is your hope? What is your prayer? What is your need? Is they just want to share their story. They just want to be heard. Mm. Thank you so much, Mariana, for sharing how you got to the point that you're at and, and also how your listening guided the process. There's so many things that you just shared that I want to touch on, but a few things that really stood out is first, you know, the Westerner, our our society, we're, we're constantly looking for an opportunity to profit or take advantage of a situation or just get something out of something, you know? And I feel like it was a really beautiful point that you made because this project did not, or or Origen Reyes did not originate from this idea of going down and creating a business, just like our company, Four Visions. I never planned on running an e-commerce business, you know, it's like to be here Mm -hmm. is is so funny and ironic, but in the pandemic, you know, during COVID, a lot of the indigenous peoples, their sources of incomes got completely cut off. And it was really at that point where um, the indigenous artisans started reaching out to us, needing more support and asking for um, the opportunity to share their their goods. And so that's kind of how Four Visions unfolded. And, and I think that there's maybe some commonalities too with the fire that has that has ignited your offerings and your work that you're doing with them. So that's one point, you know, I just wanted to to mention because it's so much more beautiful what comes when we're truly in service to the divine and truly in a place of just openness to make ourselves in service rather than from the mind trying to figure out how we can benefit from from a situation or an opportunity. And so I I really loved that point. And I just wanted to bring it a little bit more to the forefront because it's, it's very true in in all of our lives. You know, we, we often rush to make a decision or we often 
jump on an opportunity for lack of a better words, but we're actually missing out on a lot greater potential and beauty that comes when we allow life to carry us and we allow the greater design to unfold in its perfect timing. So that's that was one beautiful thread that I'm grateful that you brought into this conversation. And then speaking about the maestras, the the Shipibo technology, Cosmo Vision, you made this point that a lot of us are very familiar with the Shipibo Kene and the weavings. And from my understanding, the Shipibo culture has been, they're a very giving culture. They're very generous people. And I I think that over the last, they, they've also been one of the first ayahuasca cultures to really come out. Like they were the one of the very first to start sharing 15, maybe 20 years ago. So we're kind of now at this point where more and more tribes are coming out of the jungle and being more willing. But the Shipibo were really a, a pioneers in a lot of ways, making ayahuasca more accessible to the West, as well as opening their hearts, opening their communities, sharing with such abundant love. And in this process, there has been taking and potential dilution of this sacred wisdom through through simply the the taking of these products and these these this art and these teachings out of the jungle, out of the steward, out of the original stewards of the culture. Um, and to the point where these these weavings are on shamanic clothing and hip clothing, but there's no understanding for the sacredness of of these patterns and the ancientness that they carry and the the messages, the prayers that are carried into them. So I I feel that it's really really beautiful, and you know my path is with the Yahé. I'm I'm a student of Colombian Taitas, and so I've never had the chance to go down to Peru and and work with the maestras, but I have heard many, many beautiful things specifically about the the abuelas and the grandmothers that you work with that are in your community. And so I think it's really important. It's so, so important, the work that you're doing. And I just have a deep gratitude for you for doing it and for all of the, all of the people who are involved in uplifting the Shipibo Kinobo culture and sharing the teachings and helping to create that way because I think what we're coming to now is this beautiful time where like the the it's almost like the the tools like and the medicines and the art they got a head start but now it's mm-hmm. about coming full circle for the culture and really get bringing the space and creating the platform for these masters uh, of this plane and of many other planes that they work with. They are such beautiful people with tremendous, tremendous wisdom to share. So it's like, this is the time now for everything to come into greater balance and harmony for their people. And that's just my perception, you know, as an outsider, I'm not, I'm not experienced in the culture, but from what I've seen and witnessed, you know, and so I think that the work that you're doing is really, really important. And I want to thank you for doing it. And when you shared with me about your vision for Origen Raiz before we started this recording, I, I got shivers just feeling into the potential of of getting to access these these teachers and getting to work with them and getting to learn from them and creating that space. So I am very much looking forward to this beautiful platform coming into being and uh, would love for you to keep us posted with when these online courses and and this these offerings will start to become available. And for anyone listening who might feel called after this conversation to come and work with the maestras, where can where can we find you? Where can we come and work with? your teachers and with you and and what options are available for those who feel the strong call to get this immersive experience in the Shipibo culture. Thank you, Mariah. Thank you so much for your generous and genuine support. It truly touches my heart because 
I see you and I also honor and uplift the way that you're walking with four visions and also being uh, a steward of, of what it wants to be. And also, you know, how you offer yourself in service to the abundant nature of this work towards them and towards the preservation and protection of their peoples, their language, their traditions, you know, and how many of us have been impacted by them and, you know, how how many lands have been benefited by their prayers. So thank you as well. And yeah, really receiving your support with a lot of love and also so in awe of the way that you walk. So thank mm. you. Thank you, sister. So firstly, I always recommend to go to source. You know, it's the um, the journey that we take to to get to commune with the the land that these peoples have walked upon and taken care of and uh, grown the plants on or tended to the growth of the plants and to sit in their maloka in their sacred space of ceremony and to you know be uh, directly connected to to their place on this earth is is go directly to source so for any work anyone interested in working with the um, Sanchez Lopez lineage of the Shipibo uh, in Peru in Bucalpa the Ucayali Upper Ucayali Basin the maestras that I work with, they have a center called Niwira Shobo. And this center specifically only offers plant diets. So these are dietas that are either 14 days long or longer uh, that you commit to and dedicate to this uh, path of study and prayer with the master plant teachers of that area of the Amazon. And it's it's deep work. It's truly a honor also to be someone who diets. It's mm-hmm. a tremendous responsibility. You know, as we were talking before, we become representatives and we also carry them with us when we leave their land, leave their village. And so to take care of that is important. Um, and then... We also bridge the maestras to Costa Rica at the retreat center that I live at called Reunion. And we're on the Guanacaste coast and we are hosting the maestras this April 2023 for three different seven-day retreats. So that's another avenue of getting to work with them if the journey to Peru is, is too long. It's a way for people to to also receive the incredible, uh, profound healing from the Shipibo lineage in a seven-day retreat format. So those are two ways of, you know, having the opportunity to work with them and also be a student of their of their school, of their university, as they call it. And um, yeah, mm-hmm. get to get to dedicate yourself. To, to true, true healing from, from the root, from the inside out. Incredible. We will be sharing the links to both the center in Peru and the one in Costa Rica in our show notes, as well as links to Origen Raiz, as well as your own personal website, so that everyone who is listening can tune in and if they feel a call, find out more information about these incredible programs. And, you know, there's so many ayahuasca retreats these days and plant Mm -hmm. medicine retreats. And for someone who is looking to work with these plants, it can feel overwhelming to make a decision of where to go. And so one thing that is always important to us is with who we promote and what retreats we promote is to do a thorough investigation of the integrity and the lineage and the pillars of values that are held in the center. And so I just wanted to say that I did that with these centers that I have verified and and I have friends and, and brothers and sisters on the path that work with the maestras. And so 
Uh, we very much endorse these centers and stand behind these programs and and really just give our full support to the work that is being done. And so on that note, if there's anything that you want to share about more about the offering and the experience of for someone maybe who has never gone to the Amazon or who's who has never gone to a plant medicine retreat but wants to, um, any other information that comes to mind, you know, with making that decision and and tuning into their heart about making that commitment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, wonderful and very important points and questions again to ask because, like you said, there are so many ayahuasca retreats out there now, and some non-indigenous leds, you know, and some that are. So, I truly feel like the first. Uh, inquiry to tune into that would be beneficial to perhaps someone who has not worked with the medicine or is embarking on their on their path to to working with indigenous peoples is to really drop into is this for you is this intention yours right because the more talk the more of these conversations are had right in our communities that are accessible and that are rippled out into word of mouth, the more awareness grows for the work that's happening deep in the Amazon, deep in all other places that are bridging the people of the forest. So I do feel like really tuning into if, you know, this is, this is your calling, right? Because I also feel like we live in a world of trends where people are wanting to try it because it's it's happening or it's becoming more popular. It's becoming more known. You know, there's so many articles out now and it's very important to know if this is something that you're truly ready for because your decision carries responsibility, mm-hmm. right? And And you going, you making a decision is... For, for the greater good of your healing and of your health and of your purpose and your path and also carries responsibility. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's not something I say to tread lightly with and also to be real and authentic and honest with yourself if, if, you're, if you're willing, you know, to say yes to this magnificent, miraculous journey of healing and self-discovery and also community because we're doing this together. And it's it's so uplifting to also have brothers and sisters on the path that are taking care of these centers and, you know, supporting the Malocas and the indigenous tribes, you know, to make this work more accessible. Incredible. Such good points. Thank you so much, Mariana, and such a beautiful conversation. And I I think people are really going to enjoy listening to this. And so I know I did. And and I want to just thank you so much for your time again and offer you one final space if there's anything on your heart that you want to share and any message for those listening that feels present for you. I want to open this space before we close. I just want to express my gratitude to you, Mariah, for offering this opportunity to me and to also all those that are uh, coming on this podcast to share their story and, you know, amplify the, the voices of all of our relationships that have led us to this point, right? Like you said, maybe it wasn't the 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 purpose of why you began the business or why you even began this path, but there's a greater vision, a greater benefit on behalf of the future generations that are to really enjoy the fruits of these labors. So just want to say thank you to you and for all that you give and give back and also receive because yeah, this work is is a true gift to continue to say yes to. And it's a big one to say yes to. So mm-hmm. uh, thank you, sister. And yeah, looking forward to to all that's ahead for, for us all because we are at a very, very uh, vital, pivotal point in humanity and in the evolution of our consciousness. And, you know, again, it all comes back to the body the physical body taking care of 
these sacred vessels that, you know, allow us to speak, allow us to listen and witness the beauty of life. 